yes, and I know most of y'all got it right, but basically, and I'm going to give you an example of why this would be considered hazing. So when I was an undergrad, I was in a fraternity, and I was required to carry around a book. So the first thing was the book had a lot of really good information about uh, leadership practices, you know, really beneficial things for a student leader to have for them to succeed on the campus, right? So my first question to students is always going to be, is it important for y'all to know the information in the book? Normally it is, unless the book is filled with useless information, like I was talking about, right? So basically, and I'll give you an example of what happens with when, you, uh, when people require specific members of an organization, especially new members, to carry around a book. Uh, what happened to me was I had to carry around this book at all times. I had to have it in my left hand and walk around on campus, keep it in class. So if I was to ever sit down, I could open it up and read the information in it. So in, in the actual practice, it was a good idea because it helped me learn all the different information in the book. But there were a couple specific nights where I would go out to you know, a friend's house or whatever and they'd say, oh, do you have your book on you? And I'd be like, of course, you know, it's required, right? And then they would take the book from me and go hide it. And then they would go, okay, well, where's your book? And I will say, well, you took it from me. He was like, well, you're supposed to have it on you at all times. And so basically what happens here is it's not necessarily a bad idea for people to have a book or to um, know the information in it. But basically, you know, you're creating an opportunity for the less responsible members of your organization to take advantage of something. And so uh, and I'm not going to say not all people are going to do that, but it's not necessarily a good practice to make a specific group to carry something around because someone could take advantage of it. And like I said earlier, it still kind of creates that imbalance between the new member and the active member. So we'll go on to question number three. Hey, may I have yeah. an observation? I want to take into account downtime where people can actually be learning something when there's some downtime. And I'm, I'm thinking, you know, we, we've got our cadets here in O week, and they have their Charlie Noble book with them, and when there's downtime, they're looking at it. Mm -hmm. So I think there's... We, we may have a different bar that you and I are looking at mm -hmm. as far as whether something is amazing or not. Mm -hmm. It's also something where you, you give them the information. It's like we really encourage you to have this with yeah. you because when you there will be times when you don't have anything to do, and you can, this is something you can do. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But to re require it and then punish them if they don't is amazing. <laughs> and, and, you know, I, I say this too, that the, and, you know, like I said, the books, the information in the book is always a good idea, and, and, and it's always good for them to know that. But uh, the big thing is people take advantage of this kind of stuff. It happens. You know, we have a lot of uh, people that are in student organizations, you know, it's been men, 18 to 22, that are in student organizations and in the core, and it's normal activity for someone who's a traditionally aged college male to haze. And, I, and I'm not going to lie, it, it happens everywhere. It's not necessarily a specific group. We see it every semester from the most random student organizations. And so this training that I'm doing right now isn't necessarily targeted at one specific group. It's for student organizations, right? And so uh, for a student organization, especially one of the 60 or 70 that we have on campus, this particular thing, having a book is not a, requiring a new member to have a book isn't necessarily a good practice for them. And so the training that I do with them isn't necessarily geared towards a kid, honestly. Uh, but it's definitely, uh, more relevant to his, an actual student officer organization. Cool. Okay, the next one's going to be requiring only new members to complete service projects. Is it hazing? I had one presentation where the, the music wasn't playing and the students were so disappointed because they had to do their classes and be like the most positive music ever. So um, I'll have to figure this out in the next presentation. So uh, basically, the answer again is going to be yes. Um, but the, always the first thing that I bring up with students is going to be, is it a good idea for members to create and uh, do service projects during their time in a student organization? It is definitely a good idea for these people to do that. But really what I want to focus on is only the new members. And I see this in a lot of student organizations. And, you know, this is, this is ranging from sports clubs to um, you know, you know, even things like maybe like SGA sometimes is uh, requiring a new member to.